In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an actual versus budget analysis in about 10 minutes or so. Actual versus budget is a topic that is discussed in many occasions here in the YouTube channel and in depth in my online courses. Uh, but today I wanted to bring everything in in about 10 minutes or so and show you the main reasons why we do the analysis and then the hidden benefit that is many uh, finance professionals aren't aware of of doing the actual versus budget. And then I'm going to show you two things, how to do the Excel exercise of bringing in the data and creating the analysis. And then the second part is gonna be the actual financial analysis itself on what's going on in a business based on what we're seeing from the report. So if this sounds good to you, let's dive right in. Alright guys, so let's get to work and before we dive in, if you're new here, this is Bill Hanna, your favorite financial controller. I've been working in corporate accounting for the last 18 years and in this channel I give you the summary of all of my experiences over the last 18 years. Okay, so what we're looking at today is an actual performance of the business. So we have January through March of 2025 and we want to go ahead and create an actual versus budget report. So what we'll do is we'll bring in the data um, for the budget and then do a change and a change percentage and then begin to analyze the business and see what is going on. So let's talk about the reason why we do the actual versus budget. So the reason is we create a budget at the beginning of the year. Usually it's set even before the year begins. We get this budget approved, uh, usually by the board of directors. And the budget is really based on a five year roadmap. So you create a three to five year roadmap for the business. And to break it down into chunks, you break it down into years. And then you say, okay, for the next year, this is what I'm going to be doing as a business. This is how much revenue I'm going, to, I'm going to bring. This is how much expenses it takes to create that revenue and so on. You create a budget and you want to stick to it. And this is something that you want to lock and throw away the key. This is the budget for the year. You're not changing it. It's different than a rolling forecast. A rolling forecast is something that you keep changing as the business and the performance changes throughout the year but the budget is something that doesn't change. You create that and you wanna to stick to it. So the first reason to create the actual versus budget is really cost control. What we said we're gonna be performing is what we actually are performing. The other reason that we create an actual versus budget, which is the hidden benefit that I mentioned at the beginning, is that you can catch accounting mistakes and errors. So for example, when it comes to this account here, uh, server cost, uh, we booked $400,000 in actual in March of 2025. But let's say we, instead of booking 400,000, we booked 200,000 just based on either missing an accrual or missing a vendor invoice. All of a sudden, the difference in my actual versus budget is now 17% which is signaling to me that something is going on, either we overspent or underspent. So there is a major change from the budget, right? So that alerts me as an accountant that I might be missing an accrual or a vendor invoice. Uh, let's change that back and let's go through the analysis. So we said the first part of the video was gonna be creating the Excel exercise, which is how to bring in the data. And then the second part of the video is gonna be to analyze the actual data. So let's go ahead and begin. So I'm gonna begin from the actual results. So I have here the actual for January, February, and March. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring in the data for the budget. But before doing so, I wanna decide on what am I analyzing against the budget? Am I only analyzing the month of March or entire Q1 of 2025? And this is something that you need to discuss internally with your team and decide what is optimal. Should we do March actual versus budget? or should we do all of Q1 actual versus budget? In this case here, I am deciding it's more beneficial to do Q1 uh, actual versus budget. So in that case, I'm gonna create a column here so I can bring in my totals for the quarter, which is gonna say sum and bring in the three months together. And I'm gonna go ahead and perform that for every line on the income statement. All right, once I sum up a column for Q1, I'm gonna go ahead and create a column for the budget for Q1 of 2025. And the way to bring this in is gonna be from the budget tab. So I have a budget tab here that show me by month my budget for revenue and for expenses. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in into my tab here. And by the way, this file is gonna be available for free download in the description of the video. So go ahead and grab a copy. So let's bring in the budget for Q1. For revenue, I'm gonna say equal, and I'm gonna bring in the sum of the revenue for the three months. Um, you should be double checking that your data falls on the same row so that you can be just pointing it to the cell and bring in the total. 
I'm gonna go ahead and create that for every line on the income statement. Great, now that I have my actual data for Q1 and my budget for Q1, I can go ahead and create two columns, one for change and the other is for change percentage. For the change, this is gonna be simply saying one cell minus the other, right? So if I say equals uh, budget minus actual, it's gonna give me negative $156,000. If you look at the revenue performance, you'll notice that we did 3.9 million in Q1 versus the budget of 3.7. So showing a negative number for the change isn't intuitive, right? Because we did better than budget. We did 3.9 versus budget of 3.7. So I wanna show this as a positive number. So instead, I'm gonna make it equal actual minus budget. And that's gonna immediately visually just tell me this is a positive variation from the budget we are doing uh, better than budget by 156K. I'm gonna drag this down. So you see with revenue, we said actual minus budget because I wanted to show a positive number for the positive variation from the budget. However, with expenses, you see that for server cost, the difference is $11,000. We did uh, $11,000 more for this line item than the budget, which is negative for the business. So I want this number to be negative so that it's visually signaling that this is a negative variation. So I'm gonna say equal budget minus actual. So therefore, what I did here is that for revenue accounts, I am saying actual minus budget, and for expenses, I'm saying budget minus actual to give the right signal negative or positive to the number. Okay, so I'll go, I'll go ahead and uh, perform this for the rest of the line items here. And if you want to get deeper into this and want to use it for your day-to-day -day job, you're going to want to check out the Controller Academy courses where I teach a range of courses in accounting and corporate finance that teaches you real-life skills with real company data as well as provide you with CPE credits, which we all know uh, to get CPE credits, it's a rigorous uh, system uh, administered by NASBA that we have to go through. So these courses are ironclad in teaching you these concepts. Once I added my change in terms of dollar amount, I'm gonna add my change in terms of percentage. The reason why I add a percentage is because it gives more context. See, if it's only a $1,000 change, but that $1,000 represents 80% change, that means it is a big change that I wanna look into. But if the change is 100K based on the account value is only really 1%, that's a small immaterial change from the budget. So I'm gonna go ahead and say equals my change divided by the base. The base is always gonna be the budget. So that's gonna be divided by the budget. And that's gonna say negative 6%. Now, what does negative 6% mean in this case? Um, as you see, this is a headcount line item. Uh, we're saying that actual performance, we ended the quarter at 190 headcount. Uh, the budget was 180. So negative six is saying that this is a negative or unfavorable change that we hired more than what we said we're gonna hire. I can go ahead and apply that same logic to the rest of the column. And now I have a change percentage uh, that is visually telling me uh, what's going on. Um, the red or the negative is gonna be unfavorable uh, and the black is a favorable change. So we said headcount is unfavorable 6%. If you look at revenue, we have a favorable increase. Uh, by 4%, which is good. So we did better than what we said we were gonna do in the budget. Um, if you wanna analyze that further, you can go here. So I have a tab here for sales by customer. And in here, I have my actual performance by customer uh, and I have my budget by customer. And you'll see that we've done on average better for each customer than the budget. Uh, so it's a favorable thing. Uh, it's only for your information. If you want to formulate a commentary around it for management, you should always dig into the actual by customer and the budget by customer as well. All right, so going back to our analysis, we're going down here. Uh, we have server cost. It moved by 1% from the budget. 1% isn't material enough for me to go after it, but it's something for me to monitor as a finance leader. So I'm gonna look at the 1% and keep gauging that in the next quarter. If I see a negative trend of this going to negative 3%, negative 5%, then it's time for me to sit down with the engineering team and figure out what inefficiencies we have in our server costs that is causing these big variances. When I look at the salaries account, so I have here some wages and salaries associated with my customer support, I have a negative 5%, which means that we have 
um, we spent more money than what we said we were going to spend on customer support salaries. Uh, however, this is explainable by the 6% unfavorable headcount um, increase that we have overall. So if you want to provide commentary around that, I would recommend going here, for example, to headcount data actual versus budget and look at it by team and see where the differences are coming from. So if we said we were going to be at 180 and we end up the quarter at 190, so we hired an additional uh, 10 headcount for the quarter, this is something that you want to sit down with the department heads and understand. Is it just a timing question? Meaning we said we we're going to hire the number of headcount in the budget. We went ahead and hired them earlier than what we said we were going to hire them. So this is a timing issue. Maybe that's not a, a huge deal. But what could be a big deal is that if we're hiring more in terms of number than the actual budget. So this could be unsustainable overall for the year and can put the entire year uh, profitability at jeopardy. So these variances here in salaries correlate to the increase in headcount. However, you still want to discuss this with department heads and make sure that you're on the same page. Is this timing or is this going to be fundamentally changing the budget? Similar here, when you get to OPEX and you have these changes in salaries by 5%, that correlates to the change that we have here, um, an increase in headcount. Uh, you go down your line items, you have a favorable uh, decrease in travel, that sounds good, meaning that maybe you are exercising good controls around budgets for travel. With search ads and PR services, we are at 0% for one and favorable 4%. That sounds good. When we get to uh, software and apps, we spent 218000 The budget only had $180,000 in it or $181,000. So it's an unfavorable 20% variance. So the way to go about analyzing why this variance happened, uh, you would wanna go to this tab here, software by vendor for in the budget, and just go by month by month and figure out where comparing this to the actual performance where we have overspent. Which vendor we've overspent? Did we hire a brand new vendor altogether? Or what is going on? And then if we have a new tool in our software kit, you wanna discuss, you know, what is the ROI? How did we decide on getting this tool? and all of that. This is for software. As we go down, we see that our accounting and legal fees, we are right on budget, which is great, so that we, we know exactly what our budget was gonna be and we spent exactly that amount. So overall, uh, this is helpful in controlling the costs, making sure that what we said we were gonna spend was what actually we spent. And the second hidden benefit is that you are uh, figuring out if there is a missing accrual, a missing vendor bill, or something that is in general could be an accounting error or mistake. And that's all I have on actual versus budget. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit from it. And I'll see you in the next video.